Hello friends, happy Thursday, welcome back into the Golden Tea Lounge. Kevin Lindsay here. Hope you've been hanging out with me all week long here as we take a look at the variety, the wide variety, honestly, honestly, of all the Golden Tea courses that you guys can get in on and play and win prizes on throughout the week. It is Thursday. That means it's time to throw back to one of our classic courses. Not going too far back for today's daily contest. This is 2020's Dodge City. Now, because this course is only a few years old, it has not been used in a variety of um, modes like events, daily contests, things like that. So that is why I had to bring it back for this week's contest. $1,350 in the prize pool. A little bit around $166 top prize. Play as many times as you want from 8.59 a.m. Central Time all the way up until, excuse me, 9 a.m. Central today, all the way up until 8.59 on Friday morning. That is when we switch over to our Winter Vacation Freaky Friday Daily Contest. So plenty of time for you to get to a favorite watering hole near you, goldentea.com slash locations, as we hopefully hole out here on two. Now, <clears throat> we are in Season 3 of Golden Tea 2022, which means we are playing on the new set of teas, or what was new back in 2020. So, if you haven't played these courses in a while, it may be a little bit of a different refresher for you. Let's be honest, it's, it's going to be one for me. And of course, as always, with the daily contest, play at any Golden Tea Live, Golden Tea PGA Tour game that is updated to 2022 near you. Many times as you want to play in a day, you can. Your best score is going to get you on that leaderboard and hopefully get you a part of that prize pool. All right, Dodge City Hole 4, this par 5, a bit of a longer one. You want to do your best to get as far as you can on this little stretch of fairway, but you have to be careful because you can tell it's a hill and it's pretty high there. So if you go much farther than I did, you have a chance of rolling down into the dirt or the mud. And let me just tell you, you don't want to do that. You want to get that eagle on this hole <clears throat> any way that you possibly can. And at least the wind's only six miles in your face, so it's nothing too, um, you know, terrible for that first par five of the round. From one par five to another, we get to hole five. This one, 466 with this tee box that we have. Not the drivable look that some of you probably were hoping for, but... Still not bad to have 106 yards to the pin for a chance at double eagle if you hold that out. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, could not uh, pause the microphone fast enough. Get to hole six. This is not bad. Trade-offs here from the original tees to the new tees of this 2020 course. You go from right behind the trees to a 300 yard look, but the nice thing is, especially for today's daily contest, you don't really have to do too much. Just use that four mile an hour wind and that left green slope to your advantage. Probably get a little bit closer than I did, but even still, a short putt off of the fringe for an eagle is not a bad way to get to this hole. Now, we get to hole 7, another par 5. A couple of different options with this tee box. You can either lay up right before the rough and go over the barn. If you want to get crazy, you could try to high tee it. You could also do a big A1 here, but you may find yourself a little bit too far out in the fairway. So we're just going to soft a 9.5 degree driver here. Whether it's on the fairway or the first cut, no big deal. But once you get into that rough, um, that is when you start to cut it close a little bit. Now, this one I went back and forth. Do I hit a hard five wood or do I just hit a soft three wood? I figured the three wood was the safer option. 
and there we go. Another eagle in the books. As we get to hole eight, another drivable par four. <laughs> if you've never played this hole in Golden Tee uh, Arcade or Mobile, this one is a doozy, but it's a lot of fun. Nine mile an hour wind. You can high tee a six wood because that wind is blowing a little bit in your face. Um, if you wanted to get crazy, you could do a five wood and try to go around the right hand side. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my tee to the far right corner and I'm just going to high tee a six wood. That nine mile an hour wind is, you know, not too heavy. And that, that's honestly about as good as you can get outside of dropping it in the bottom of the cup. So don't be afraid to hit that six wood pretty hard. Probably going to be your best bet depending on, of course, what clubs you have and, and what golf balls. But as always, using grabbers here in the Golden Tee Lounge. We get to hole nine. This is uh, one of those longer par threes that you don't see too often except when you have the newer tee boxes from this hole. Now, hopefully you have survived the front nine with a score similar to mine, if not better. But the back nine is where it's going to get a little trickier when it comes to par fives. Thankfully for hole 10, just a pretty straightforward par four. Again, you don't want to get too close to the graveyard for a variety of reasons, but also because uh, you're not going to have fun hitting it out of the dirt there. Just land in the fairway and go right at it with an eight wood or a club of similar distance. Hole 11, another par 3 that is typically short, but in this instance, you've got an 8 wood, 5 hybrid. I'm going to go ahead and just hit a high T5 hybrid because to me it's easier to get more height on a hybrid versus trying to cut height and distance on the 8 wood. Also, the wind's blowing right to left, so I've got some green to work with. Um, even if I end up back here, still not going to be a bad chip or putt from the rough here. All right, hole 12, this was one hole in particular that I was concerned about. Um, with this tee box, not going to be a big deal at all because we could just slam a driver straight down the fairway. But when you have older original tee boxes, your options are trying to lay up here, excuse me, between these trees and not getting into the rough, or you can go through the barn over there. But because of the setup we've got in today's contest, we're just going to smash Smash a driver with roll. I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the sand without hitting it. That was a little close. Um, and then you shouldn't have any issues from here. Just be careful. Although down four is not a massive slope, um, just something you want to be aware of as you're trying to get close to that, that pin that's tucked up in the front there. All right, hole 13, this is a fun, drivable par four. You've got these grain bins. You've got the uh, barn here right in your way. Um, nice part about this setup is that you can tee it in the corner, and you've got a good look here. Where it gets tough, tough is do you hit the eight wood? Do you hit the three hybrid? <clears throat> do you try to cut a six? The wind's blowing against you. It's not fun. I don't do this very often, and I'm just going to say screw it. We're going to hit the three hybrid. Thankfully, we funneled it through the space. Um, because that pin is up on the, the tier, it's going to be a little bit tougher of a putt, but shouldn't be too bad overall. And honestly, taking a birdie on this hole, not a big deal. This is one of those holes that 95% of the people out there probably are not going to play this course once and go, okay, I'm happy with that. They're going to get out there and they're going to play again because they're going to want to get a better score. Hole 14. 525 yards, not a massively long par 5, but it is a creative one. I'm going to go ahead and hit a C1.5, C2. I want to get out as far as I can here to take advantage of that 10 mile an hour wind, and I want to try to avoid this tree as much as I can. Says he wants to avoid the tree, and then actually hits the tree, but luckily for you, those leaves are apparently invisible. 
Uh, my suggestion is make sure you get it out much farther to the right to go around the tree because you're not always going to have that invisible leaf. Um, not sure how that happened, but I'm happy to roll with it. Hole 15, another through the barn shot. We've seen a lot of creative shots of the week, even some shots of the year. Um, this one's a bit tougher, though, because that pin is tucked in the right-hand corner. So probably going to hit either a high T5 wood or no T5 wood, a medium T, and I'm not exactly sure how we want to play this. The other way you could go about this is hitting a soft 3 wood, and maybe we'll actually try that. A soft 3 wood, I want to land it on the roof, and I want to just gently bounce it off of the roof onto the green. Can that work for us? Oh my gosh. Right there, close enough. That would have worked if I would have just hit it a little bit harder. Not sure if my G... Oh, my G-Wedge did get that high, so at least we're going to have our birdie. And again, like I said, some of these par fours as you get to the back nine are not going to be as much of a gimme as you probably want. So it may require a couple of games to get out there and, uh, and hone in on those eagles. All right, hole 16, par 5. Um, this is one that you can actually land over here by the guillotines, but what we're going to do is just go ahead and high tee this. We want to blow it past the mud. We want to get into that sand, or the dirt as they're probably going to call it here, because this one you can take um, a 6 wood with that 50 mile an hour wind and get there without a problem. I'm going to do something I don't rarely, uh, I rarely do these days, which is go to the left and hit it to the right because trying to get any kind of movement out of the dirt is not fun. So we're just going to go ahead and come from right to left and see what happens here. Should have used bite, damn it. That probably would have been in there, but see what I mean? 167 yard approach shot on a par 5 is not bad at all because of that opportunity for double eagle. And of course, um, just getting on the green and putting in for eagle. All right, 17 of Dodge City here. Another fun hole that you don't typically see this short of a distance. Nine mile an hour wind. I have super spin clubs, so I need to be careful here. But what I'm actually going to do to play it safe is I am going to go one click to the right. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take advantage of this large part of the green and try to spin it back towards the hole from there. So I had much more room to work with. And I'm probably going to be about 20 feet from the pin, maybe a little closer. Look at that, 16. Couldn't tell you the amount of times that I put in for birdie on that hole, but it's not a lot if I honestly looked. And again, we're off two strokes, so it is going to be a 30 under look. You get to hole 18 here. It is a little difficult. 331 off the tee. Again, you got to be careful of the boxes that are in front of the, the hole here. But for us, I'm just going to come from left to right, high T, or excuse me, medium T, 10 and a half degree driver. Now the reason I'm going left to right is because I want to take advantage of that wind. It bounces on um, a what you call it there, a box there, no big deal. Now I'm not sure if I can putt this, it's been a long time since I've been in this spot. I'm just going to go ahead and putt it so you guys know if you're close enough whether or not you can feel comfortable doing that, and you can. So. 28 under after 18 holes. We missed two of the drivable par fours. Not a big deal. Again, daily contest, $1,350 in today's pool. Play as many times as you want before 8.59 a.m. Central Time on Friday. And we will see you guys tomorrow for our winter vacation, Freaky Friday. We're getting away from the snow and the cold, and we're going to the beach in some warm weather and hopefully some low scores. So, goldentea.com slash locations. Thanks again for joining me, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.